Welcome to a video presentation of a section covering the topic of Kramer's Rule. Now, I told you last week we were going to get to a point where we could finally start solving two equations with two variables, and that's what we're going to get today. That's what we're going to work on, two equations with two variables. There's three different ways you can actually solve, well, there's more than that, but three, we're going to study. Three ways to solve two equations, two variables. Kramer's Rule, substitution method, elimination method. Those are the three methods we have. A lot of people like Kramer's rule because it's significantly less work, less rearranging equations, but then again, some people don't like it at all. As you can see, though, there are a lot of steps over there. Step one says to line up the equations in order. The x terms, then the y terms, and the equal signs, then the constants. As you can see with all the examples on the board, they're already in that order. x things are already first, then the y signs, or the y's, and then the equal signs, and then the constants. All right. Step two says to set up two fractions, one for x and one for y, and put two by two matrices in both the numerators and denominators. And that's already been done as well. You can see I did that for all the problems on the board. There are matrices set up with fractions. Step three, you're going to put the matrix of <coughs> coefficients in both denominators in the order they appear in the problem with their signs. Now, perhaps this bears some refreshment. Coefficients are just numbers in front of variables. So when I'm saying put the matrix of coefficients there, I mean you're going to take all the numbers that are in front of the variables, put them in a matrix. That's all I mean. Step four, in the numerators for x, lift up the right row, and for y, lift up the left row from the denominator. That'll make sense when we do it. Step five, in the remaining blank spots, fill in with the constants in the order they appear with their signs. And I'll make some sort of good too. Step six, take or find the determinant of all four matrices. And luckily for you, that's a lot easier than matrix multiplication. Step seven, simplify the fractions to find x and y. Simplify the fractions to find x and y. Let me read through those steps one more time. I see a lot of you are still writing, so you're probably still writing the steps. Step one, line up the equations in order. x terms, y terms, equal signs, constants. Step two is to set up two fractions, one for x and one for y, and put two by two matrices in both numerators and denominators. Step three, put the matrix of coefficients in both denominators in the order they appear in the problem with their signs. Step four, in the numerators for x, lift up the right row, and for y, lift up the left row from the denominators. Step five, in the remaining blank spots, fill in with the constants in the order they appear with their signs. Step six, take or find the determinant of all four matrices. Step seven, simplify the fractions to find x and y. 
And you can see it's underneath that in the handwriting in the chalk on the chalkboard. It says the de definition of a determinant. A determinant is the difference of the products of the diagonals of a matrix. The difference of the products of the diagonals of a matrix. Alright, now we've solved equations all throughout the year pretty much. So far, we've just looked for one single variable. Like, if it's just x, you tell me what x is. Okay. Now we're switching it up. There are two variables. You have to find x and you have to find y. Now, the only way to do that, though, is to have two equations, right, which is exactly what you have. Now, I was asking you to find three variables. You could guess it probably pretty well that you have to have three equations. Four variables, four equations, so on and so forth. But that's what we've got here. Two equations, two variables. You have to find x and y. And you're not just finding any x and y. Like you can see in that first example there, it says x minus y equals 3. Well, some people might say, well, that means x could be 10 and y could be 7 because 10 minus 7 is 3, and that's my answer. No. It's got to be x and y that works in both the first equation and in the second equation. It's got to be the same things that work in both, which is why this is difficult. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first example. You've got 3x minus y equals 1, and you've got x minus y x equals 3. X Okay, so step one said to line up the equations in order x's, y's, equal signs, constants. As you can see, they're already both like that. X is first, then you got your y, then you got your equal signs, then you got your lonesome numbers. They're already like that, and a lot of the problems tonight are going to be like that. So step one, not a big concern. Step two, set up two fractions, one for x and one for y, to put two by two matrices there. Step three, this is where we actually start working. Put the matrix of coefficients in both denominators in the order they appear in the problem with their signs. So the best first thing we can do here is actually write out the coefficients. Remember, again, coefficients are just numbers in front of variables. Okay, so for instance, this first one here, all right, well as you can see, there's a three in front of 